By the way, uh, uh, the, with respect to the paper I will uh, mention next, on the next meetup, there will be common motive between these two papers. And actually not, uh, not, not one common motive, so second common motive I will betray next month, but this, this month I, I will tell that there are a lot of papers lately on the machine learning that uh, show substantial progress, like 2011 deep learning, uh, visual deep learning paper by Jan LeCun and his team that basically made the, the shown the whole new class for uh, for image processing and general uh, thought is that we are reaching the moment that learning is not that difficult if you know what to learn how to not offer feet and you have the right amount of data obviously because as known from the work of i think minsky in 60s, they had this this chart with that shown how much you can learn from with the different sophisticated methods, and there was uh, the the basic inference was that if you have enough made data, and your uh, learning algorithm uh, is even even not very sophisticated, but it's able to represent the the function space, you will get the right results anyway. So if you have something more than regression, maybe polynomial features, for example, yeah, of, of sufficient degree. And even regression with polynomial features can learn something if you have enough data. The interesting thing about uh, deep learning is also recently the game against Go. The that's the next month. Uh, that, that's exactly the next month. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay that's and uh, as I said, you may not believe, but there is a common motive here <coughs> that I will discuss maybe at the end of this meetup or, or, or next month. So this paper is solely about human level learning through probabilistic program induction. So the, by human level concept learning, we mean that from a single example, we can extrapolate what is the class that we try to detect try to produce another exemplar of the same class and recognize whether the other character is at least mildly similar to the class, yeah? if it represents the same concept. Which is something completely different than classical machine learning, where you expose yourself to a big training set, like hundreds of images yeah? or more, in a hope to recognize even not so much changed instance of the same problem. And the best example is how humans do it. So basically here you see, for example, Segway. Maybe it's the first Segway you've seen in life, but you can recognize the wheels. You can deconstruct that there is a stick in the middle. And there is a guiding stick on the top. So you can already disassemble it. And that's what authors believe is critical for human level concept learning so that you, by induction, you infer it has to be constructed from smaller parts and from the parts that I already know. So you can recognize the wheel itself. You, could, uh, you can recognize the steering stick. It's not a wheel, so... <laughs> uh, you can recognize uh, the, 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 the suspension. So you will recognize the basic things from which this machine is made, even if it's the first time that you've seen the Segway. So the idea of this learning algorithm is to bias the algorithm towards the things that we construct in a certain way. In, 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 in this example, characters are usually drawn by hand. Or even if they are printed, they bear the resemblance to a particular script which with, uh, with which they were written. So maybe we can use this knowledge and say, Oh, but how would it be to paint the character? And here is a more concrete way of how humans would learn it. So, on the bottom you have the uh, character in a font that doesn't belong to the uh, handwritten script, but it is similar to handwritten characters. So we can use the same method. Then, 
On the top we have different handwritten characters and if you think about it you can disassemble in memory all of them into basic elements like this character. It's very complex but you can disassemble it to a curved circle, to a uh, hook and to a last twisted line. Yeah? <coughs> if you disassemble it into three dashes, three lines that were drawn separately, you can reproduce it after seeing just one character you are able to paint it, yeah? You can reproduce it this way. And that's what makes us so wonderful about writing, yeah, and painting. So, how would it be to make computer recognize the way that the character was drawn? So first we can say that we have basic elements, which are small lines, yeah? So we can have a turn, we can have a hook or wave, as you prefer, we can have a line and down and a line up. Each of them, if it's used for a character, is reasonably unique. Maybe not line down and line up because it's sometimes this is difficult to distinguish which way we draw it. But if after this line is there is a hook or something, we can basically guess that first we could draw from the top left and then we go down and they have a hook. Then we have these basic motifs and from these basic motifs we uh, assemble the longer lines. So basically those that are drawn without uh, s uh, putting the pencil off the paper. Yeah. So as long as we can do it in a single stroke. And this single stroke is basically a composition of this connected sequentially. So we have this epsilon a single stroke. And if you have this, you can also immediately constrain the locations. That's, that's important for every learning algorithm. The most important thing is to restrict the search space. So that is reasonable search space so that we don't learn forever with minute details that do not generalize. So that's the first way of limiting the, the search space. And the second is taking two stroke characters. So we have epsilon and the hook and we know that we cannot draw them together because our parsing reached the limit, the line ends. So we have three line ends here. We know it, we have two strokes and we try to assemble them together. So the relocation, the, the relative orientation between these two strokes tells us what it is. Not absolute position, but relative. And th this, this allows us to distinguish characters. So for each element, we can draw the, the uh, hook, the turn, or straight line with slight, mot they call it motoric noise in, our, in this paper, so basically there will be noise in the angle or that it will be slightly curved. And thus you are able to reproduce for the same character, also reproduce this noise in the components. So you already can show the exemplars, yeah? That look, look the same, like the same character, but they are slightly different then how do you distinguish between these characters is that you use different motifs in different order. Yeah? And it seems like maybe very complex thing, very complex uh, way of learning. So they basically shown in this example that if you have the basically black and white image without any bias, you can easily, assuming certain width of your pencil, you can easily parse it in multiple ways as different lines. So for example, minus 593 is one of the parses. It's one line and then it try, traces back on the same line. No problem with that. We, have, we just consider all possible parses as different strokes and try to match if each of these strokes together. And then we say, how similar is it to the, our pattern, yeah? So we basically try parsing it as sequence of strokes, then match each of sequence of strokes 
to the patterns, to the, uh, to the basic motifs, and then to the patterns, and check which one is most similar. So it turns out minus 593 is actually not very similar to any pattern that we stored, but minus 505 can be passed in two different ways. Yeah? Depending how fuzzy it is. Why, why minus? Is it some kind of distance measure? Yeah, it is distance measure. But the difference between two, two, two these parses is significant enough that they distinguish. I, I suppose sometimes it may lead to conflation or confusion. But it's still about accuracy we will tell but, uh, in a minute. So I would tell first we assume that we know the components and if the space of the possible parses with the given components is limited, we have very limited search space. And then it's very easy to distinguish between different alternatives because we don't conflate things that do not matter in the search space. Our search space from something like, you know, 100 by 100 images gets limited to just few patterns with few relative positions, that's it. Yeah? There's just a few bit literally for for each of these colors. And they also tried to show what is the best way to do it. So they, initially they tried very sophisticated, very sophisticated hierarchical deep learning. Also, of course there was deep convolutional network, that's a classical way of doing image analysis. But without limiting the search space, it has still goes down in the error rates, yeah? From, because here the lower is better. So basically the, the error rate is, is the penalty. But it never goes as much down as when you try to hire people people are the, the pink ones, the, the violet ones. Why? Because people know what should be there, so they limit the search space very well nicely. Yeah? So we do not really see this every pixel does matter, no. If you remember a character, you don't really remember where there was a small dot or small blemish, you know? In most cases, unless that was a very stressful situation, you will remember general motive, so you will remember actually very limited amount of information because you have preconception prejudice of what should be there and how it was made. And to reach this accuracy they've limited the search space and BPL, this is their solution, Bayesian program learning, so basically Bayesian uh, inference on what was the way of drawing these characters quickly with some with some uh, uh, tweaks can reach the same accuracy as models. The thing is that when you start adding lesions, so you stand, start adding interruptions into these motifs, it starts being less accurate and only as accurate as deep learning models. And that's probably because their program learning doesn't infer that this could be broken line, yeah? That there is an error inside. But that, that's something that can be actually sometimes recognized in handwriting. I don't know if you, if you had ever, it, it ever occurred to you, but sometimes if the, the character is obscured by some, but part, part of the character is obscure, you will read the different character because you will infer something else. So this is problem common for people also. The way to avoid it is to add the model about how it can be obscure. So maybe it's just small interruption or maybe some other factors like other, other uh, object can obscure the character. But this, this is the thing that the Bayesian program learning doesn't know. So it cannot infer where did this disruption come from. So I would say the, the main motive here would be the dramatic reduction of search space by assuming how these characters were made, by really adding the knowledge to the method, the learning method, 
about how much simpler are characters from arbitrary images. Because on the right side, in, in these benchmarks, we definitely see how generic image recognition application works. And on the left side, we see how much better is the method that assumes that it has to be a drone character, even if it's not. It just has to be similar to a drone character, yeah? So that would be it. I hope that was dim dynamic enough and I captured your imagination. And do they say anything about how to get uh, this concept information? For example, the books and then lines and that kind of stuff? Or is it just given? So, so I assume that's uh, application specific. I understand that they, in this case, they basically first use convolutional network to just distinguish wh how the individual strokes are drawn. Yeah, so it just distinguishes, oh, this is a stroke going this direction or the other direction. And then they, they, they merge this information into full lines. That, that, that's described in, in little detail in the paper, but they have a GitHub reference link to the code. That's what I found very interesting was, I think the ability to define the primitives, so to say, mm -hmm. uh, and to create a model of them yeah. uh, in the same sort of framework as what you're using is something yeah. that's super critical to be able to do this. Yeah. And, and I mean, I, I'm, I'm trying to think, mm -hmm. like, how can you think about this from a perspective of what, you know, humans, the, the way humans learn is, I guess at some point, yeah. you you either based on history or based on teaching are told that these are the primitives mm -hmm. uh, in, in, you know, mm -hmm. that, that you want to keep looking at and then, ah, okay, I see this primitive here, I see a veal, I see a, keep going. So if you, uh, there is this deep dream uh, paper that was referred by Martin, and if I may refer to this paper, Basically, in this paper, they, they shown that I uh, like basic recognizer, basic one layer network, say, just recognizes one thing. But when you arrange it into deeper layers, basically each level will recognize slightly different function. And you can see that the different neurons in hidden layers basically recognize different motives or functions. So we can assume that from the learning perspective, it's some program or some method to be learned and our neural networks are just particularly flexible mechanism to recognize any program so they can adapt to learning the, the visual uh, recognizing visual images by decomposition in, into basic functions at different levels they can also do, do this so basically here the first level of the machine is just five by five convolutional network I assume that there is something that works like convolutional network that's called, I think, the, the visual memory. Basically, you focus on a single spot and recognize the single spot, but the, the objects that you have seen and recognized stay in your memory and you can refer to them even if you close your eyes. So the first very simple example is you close your eyes and you see the room still. Sorry, for the left-hand side, this classification task, what, what was the actual... Was it recognizing the letters or what was it trying so to classify? So, they actually, on the right side, you on see... The on the left side, it was uh, one shot, so one classification among 20... Among what do you mean by class? What, what are the classes being... So, they, they, they used, uh, the, uh, I think, about 10,000 characters from different human scripts and alphabets including, say, Latin, Sai. This was quite huge. I assume that 10,000 cannot cover the full traditional Chinese characters, but I mean, maybe Chinese is not, not the easiest example here because you have really many strokes, yeah? And the, 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 the order is not clear. And are there any examples other than this uh, 
character recognition of people or they so, just so the me their method is specific to character recognition and this kind of characters. yeah so the, 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 the ones that you draw with relatively small number of strokes. So that not <coughs> traditional Chinese, maybe simplified Chinese, yeah? But how do you go from the generative model to getting a class? Like, okay, this is the letter A, or this is the letter Z, or so this, yeah. the, this uh, is the Greek letter alpha. So first, first you, you, you have this very small convolutional network that just guesses in which direction you draw the stroke. Then you connect this into a single stroke, yeah, until it ends. And when you have a stroke, then you use these motifs, turn, hook, straight line. Right. You decompose that? Yeah, you decompose okay. it. It's like letters of alphabet, in a way. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah? And then you have a sequence of letters of alphabet, basically. It's word recognition. And yeah. very simple, the sequence recognition. You recognize the sequence of the same things. Yeah? Also, you know that this alpha is drawn with a loop. With oh, you can see it here. Is that what you so mean? basically, oh. you can see this as two letters together as a single stroke, which means turn, turn. Okay. That's very simple to, f to find in the database. Yeah? And you have a database of all the known letters, all how they're composed. Yeah. But it will be exactly the same, right? So the one you, the model you get from your this example noise, noisy will not match. That, that's the same. This database has 10,000 different characters, but it <coughs> has also multiple exemplars for each. Oh, your, your input is also yes. examples of the actual Yeah, so for characters. example, here on the, on the lower part, you have the same letter and different examples of it. So this is in your input, in that sense? Uh, the the known characters. This is for testing. Your input should be able to learn <coughs> mm -hmm. the motive from a single example. But you also have examples of the actual, like, the actual letters, right? Like, you're trying yeah, to so guess. You have a single example of a letter. Yes. And then, then you can recognize, say, 20 other examples of the same letter. Slight variation of it. Yeah? Yes. I mean, these are not so slight because normally it's considered not too easy image recognition task to, to recognize all the rotations. And here you have distortions, you have motoric noise, everything. Yeah? It's like, as long as it's still the same character in the sense okay. that human would try <coughs> So you have a single example of every... Yeah, it's 10,000 different uh, uh, Every whatever. letter of an alphabet yes. of 10,000. Yes. Okay, makes sense. So what you're trying to basically create is a generalized understanding of how this alphabet works or what the primitives of this alphabet are. It's like learning calligraphy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the primitives in a way are built in because the hooks, the, the circles are bu built in in a way, yeah? So I mean, these are, these, are these automatically sort of learned by the network or, or so they are oh, so these are okay, programs? That's yeah. actually not entirely clear from the paper. Right? Okay. But they, they said that they basically embed this knowledge. They okay. 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 small motifs and then they assemble okay. together. So it's, it's, it's basically a pattern matching at first. Yeah. Then use the same patterns to, to if they say if the same pattern match or the same mm -hmm. sequence of patterns yeah. match, then then you. Okay. It's it's a it, it looks a little bit overfitting to this kind of problem to me. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know how to generalize it. It's, it's a nice idea to do this. So you have a general, general character recognition from handwritten characters, which are usually considered the most difficult. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what, why is it overfitting. Because normally when you recognize the, 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 the task of reading, you assume that you have actually particular alphabet or particular language. And you just are interested in a sequence of characters that grows up. Yeah? Here, you actually do not assume particular alphabet because these are multiple alphabets and you just want to know the character sequence coming out of it, like Unicode code points. Okay. So, so it's actually, you know, it's more robust than what humans usually do. But this cannot find, for example, sigma in, in Greek letters? So, or, or Unless it is in... in so, so you, you, you can, have, you have you to can only recognize you something that you already seen. In the training set. No, I mean, you, you cannot define sigma with this character, with these primitives. No? You can, because you, you would have more, more primitives? Le line left, 
Diagonal right? Diagonal left is not here. For the, here. Yeah, it's not shown. There are more primitives. Yeah, there are more. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 like three strokes and they can all rejoin each other in different relations. I mean, you've got explosively such large search space. So, so, yeah, so the they, they also discuss it, a traditional Chinese where you have easily the characters of 20 strokes, yeah, 30 strokes. Yeah. Maybe a harder example. But so it is for humans. To learn the alphabet of yeah, the ten thousand characters is difficult. I, I could write Chinese in some horizontal strokes and some vertical strokes, but in fact, Chinese people say, "Well, in there, there's you know, various boxes and there's there's different elements of this." But really, they they faked it because they'd have written <coughs> the, the Chinese elements at the top rather than just vertical and horizontal strokes in order to make it work for Chinese and reduce the size of their search space. <coughs> they'll put the fundamental. In there, like yeah, they, they also use radicals, yeah. Whatever that, that, that's what they, they actually do here. So they try to make, you know, the motifs. So they make the radicals of the characters in other languages, yeah. So this, so this is what, something I didn't really get about the paper. And they, they have this nice segue example. Uh -huh. But it's yeah. like it gets easier if you, if the components specified are yeah. handlebars, a stick, and some wheels. Yeah. Right? yeah. Well, there's only, yeah, there's only, yeah. If you already know that, then it's yeah. like, so that's that's the, that's the given. Thing. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. Seems a bit weird. That that does yeah. mark uh, until parts. until <laughs> the end. I always kept thinking that's what they guessed from their alphabet, which is I think that's pretty cool, right? To be able to take an alphabet and say, hey, looking at this yeah. this this alphabet of you know whatever a thousand characters, it seems that these are the primitives uh, that are being used, and then use that to then do the rest of the thing. That would have been super yeah. cool. Uh, yeah, mm. exactly. But that's point. not what they're doing. If they just taken. Uh, whatever number of things in the relationships, they may have searched through ten to the nine combinations, yeah. picked out the ones which match the ten thousand yeah. as closely as possible, yeah. Yeah. pixel by pixel. Yeah, but you it's don't nice. write the science paper like this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree. It's, it's interesting, uh, yeah. but it's a bit. It's a bit like nice you're eating thing. a bit like that, right? So the, the, the thing is, uh, of course, they, they they chose their solution so they can have. So th this is bias of science or nature. Right? They chose their, their domain to have a great solution that surpasses current efforts by large. Sure. That, that's standard. But besides that, the fact that they are able to just take the single character, disassemble it into parts and replicate it or recognize it in any hundred thing, I would say that is impressive part. Even if they assume some preliminary knowledge, yeah? So at the point of recognizing that they already have the models of the like known letters, and then you have this new test character, and you construct the model again. Yeah. And at some point, you have to compare the yeah. the, the the model so of the input the, the, the and the, the standard. other characters are to to decrease confusion. So you know that if if your character is, is as similar as, as as likely as the new character, or several of them are equally likely then the probability, the relative probability, that this is the correct guess, is small. Yeah, so the question is how they compare the two error. models. So the, the, like the models of those you've already seen and the new, yeah. the new letter, how do you compare the different models? The different so, yeah, it's programs, I guess, in this case. Have the, this example, you have different <coughs> elements, uh -huh. different strokes. You compare the strokes, and if they are dissimilar, then you know, you what always you have similar? a measure of similarity okay. here at every level of the algorithm. You have similarity to say a hook. If you pass a, a hook or a turn, mm -hmm. you say this is turn with this accuracy. And then you can have, so this is conditional probability on a small element, and you can have probability on entirety. Or likelihood from your model. Right, but there's one model, right? So now you have like the new model of the new, the new character, and then all the, you know, the like ten thousand you've seen earlier. How do you, you know, find like the most closest or the best? I, I think they basically compare it again. So. so the other question is, how do they justify this, the, the, this embedding of this information with respect to human behavior? It's like 
you so, know, so what is the analog in human behavior they, to having they, this embedded inside? They, they would say that inductive learning is okay. the analog. So they would say that we learn that, for example, if the laptop is open and there is presentation, somebody had to prepare the presentation. Okay. Huh? So probably one of us has been preparing. And here it's not true. I just took images from the paper, but you know, the same way, if you have a chair, you infer that it's made of plastic uh, and steel, for example, or aluminum. Because these are materials that match the, the usual composition of the chair, probably aluminum, just by weight. It doesn't have to be. But basically, humans have so much preconceived knowledge. So from the birth, you learn so many things. You can use to limit the possibilities here. Yeah? But that paper is claiming one shot learning when in fact it's only one shot if you give it all the learning ahead of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. There, it's one shot in a sense. In a, they let's say teach it on 90% of characters. And you will have the same achievement if you just give it one example. So here you can say, you know what I mean. No, no, I have no. So you g give it one example of each character. Yeah. That's one shot. Yes. But you give it some alphabet, so it you know it knows how different the characters may be, because otherwise it will be like a small child sees learn letter A and sees a letter U, which is kind of similar, and then it's A because it doesn't know any other letter. So letter must be A. By induction, it's quite probable that it is A, because there is no other letter. Yeah? I so mean, that, that, that's typical induction thing. I'm guessing that there's also... If it's character, it's drawn. If it's drawn, it's strokes. It's most likely to be a few strokes, because that's more convenient for people. Right. So it's a program. So somebody drawn it. I don't care how it looks now. I know that it was drawn, and thus I know that it has to be a sequence of strokes. If it's a sequence of strokes, I know how to reproduce it. Does it make sense? So, uh, the, the, the thing that I'm not convinced or, or not... Uh, well, the, the, the problem is that the features are very well selected for this kind of task, mm -hmm. which, is, which is okay. Mm -hmm then if you give these features and if you select these features <laughs> and, and, and pick, then it, it seems like an easier solution, but I think... So but, but they but also they the it, so describe, nice but paper. in less detail, how they yeah. pre-process the data in a way. But I understand yeah, that so they also, so I also concentrated on this. <laughs> Not on the pre-processing, on, on in finding the motives, for example, in the characters. Yes but to make sure that you recognize the final character because it's, it's the part that has the critical influence on the final effect. Okay. So Maybe if you make it slightly less accurate on the stage of learning motifs, it will not change the overall performance because you still would recognize the sequence of motifs, yeah. mm -hmm. the strokes. Okay. Maybe we can continue the discussion how to import these figures, primitives, right. and we can write a paper about it. Like underpants and gnomes. Like, like what? Underpants and gnomes. Like, first you get the underpants, yes. <laughs> you gather all the step, underpants, step. question mark, make no. profit. No, okay, yeah. so step like, one. Here's like step Martin, one. Do yeah, no, for, no, for no, a comparison, <laughs> for comparison, you have all OCR <laughs> engine, you want to detect, you, you want to, or you, you have a library of, of ancient, uh, medieval scripts. You give it one example of each letter and you expect it to read the books, basically. I think it's, it's a bit too demanding because the, the, the calligraphy style was a bit too elaborate and it had too many variants, so you would need to give it fewer examples for each letter because there are ligatures in this script. But you still could, the fact that you could do it would be a great achievement. Except that here it recognizes just one, one letter, which is much easier. The human can already do it. Oh, uh, they, they, they just want, they they just want to match the human performance. Okay, maybe that's where the, we're overselling ourselves, in that matching human performance is kind of a given here. 
because that's what you're priming to do. Superseding human form seems like the next step. But yeah, but, never but, but that's that. the next month. <laughs> that's yeah. about superseding humans. I hope that by that time they already win against these go master no, in Korea. But but for, oh. the, for the for the but for the go I mean, thing, I can see that from first principles, it's a natural progression through Atari to go. They're not adding in super extra knowledge along the way. But see, they seem to be priming this thing to win. I wonder if it, this can read the uh, uh, recap chatting, uh, capture images. It, it, it would be nice. Yeah. Yeah like the strokes from fonts and that it just recognize all fonts ever. Yeah. Like instead of like, you know, some human script, just do it for fonts that are probably distorted in a capture, right? Like that's just solves capture. Yeah. Is that sort of what they're doing? Uh, yeah. So the, the, the nice explanation that you will see he is here. So it can learn for, from some fonts, like this, this lower example from single character in this form, you can draw it, yeah? The, the thing that it most of the time should be doable from the method, but is not guaranteed is that if you have the, 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 this varying width of the line, I don't think they train their machine for this. So that may, may give problems. Yeah. So th this is yet the, the another level level of what humans know that th this is the same line, but it can vary in the width, and their program still doesn't know it. Yeah. Canada. Canada. So forty-eight characters. Canada. Yeah. I think that's the one with the with the blue there. <laughs> B three. Yeah. Yeah. B three. B three. C. Yeah. But uh, uh, as I said, they use the database of 10,000, which in probably includes Canada, but also many others. Yeah. So th there, there is basically this database of 100 characters in different languages that they mention in the paper. They also give the link to it. Anybody can lo download it. They also give the link to their BPL. So you can just download the engine and use it. Which is awesome. Uh, that's how research should be done, by the way. Everything li linked to GitHub and reproducible. And it's like 50 pages of uh, supplement information. I, I try to read through of the parts of the code, but it's just too much. Thank you. Thank you. For oh. great questions. Now I d I'm not sure that I understood the fact for myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you understood enough that <laughs> you could explain to us and yeah. you could make us confused. <laughs> okay.